Okay, so when we have a function that is the reciprocal of another function, so for instance, f of x is equal to 1 over the g of x, and we want to take the derivative of this function, you may approach it using the reciprocal rule, which is f prime of x, the derivative of x is equal to, sorry, the derivative of f is equal to negative g prime of x, the derivative of g divided by g squared of x. Okay, so this reciprocal rule can be applied as long as g of x is not equal to 0, and g of x is differentiable at the value of x where we want to find the derivative. So g of x is differentiable at x. So the reciprocal rule allows us to express the derivative of f of x in terms of the derivative of g of x. But how did we come to this formulation? Well, that's what we're going to prove in this video. And to prove it, I'm going to use the definition of the derivative. So we have df dx is equal to, by the definition of the derivative, it is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So in our case we have, we want the derivative of 1 over g of x. So substituting 1 over g of x for f of x we get the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 on g of x plus h minus 1 on g of x all over h. Alright, so what I am going to do now is to combine these two fractions together and form a common denominator. So we multiply g of x and g of x plus h together, and that's our common denominator. The first one does not have a g of x, and the second one does not have a g of x plus h, so we just cross multiply, and that's still all over h, and well, let's not forget the limit as h approaches 0 at the front. My apologies if it is getting a little busy, but we are simplifying now because according to my fractional laws, I can combine these two as a multiple. So we get on the bottom h times g of x by g of x plus h. And on the top, we simply copy g of x minus g of x plus h. And of course, it is the limit as h approaches 0 of all of that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is to split this into two limits. And how I'm going to do that is, let's split this into two fractions, or a multiple of two fractions. So for the first one, we have g of x minus g of x plus h all over h and for the second fraction it's multiplied by it's 1 over g of x by g of x plus h and of course we are taking the limit as h approaches 0 of all of that so according to my limit laws I can apply the limit to the two fractions separately as a multiplication of two limits. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x minus g of x plus h over h by the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 on g of x by g of x plus h. For the first limit, I can take out a negative, and if I take out the negative, I switch the terms around. So, if I take a negative to the outside, I have negative of the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x over h, and this is all equal still, by 
let's just copy down the uh, second limit so we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 on g of x by g of x plus h. All right, now the first limit, this guy here, is simply the definition of the derivative for the function g. So thus we have negative g prime of x by the definition of the derivative. And the second limit, well, because g of x is not equal to 0 and because it is differentiable at the value of x where we want to find the derivative, then it follows that as h approaches 0, g of x plus h approaches g of x. So the second limit simply goes to, or evaluates to, 1 on g of x by g of x. So therefore, we have derived and proved the reciprocal rule where the derivative of f of x, which is equal to the derivative of 1 over g of x, is equal to negative of g prime of x on g squared of x. We might be thinking, isn't this just a special case of the product rule or the quotient rule? Well, the short answer is yes it is, and we can show that here as well. So if y of x is equal to some function u of x on v of x, then the quotient rule states that the derivative of y is equal to v times the derivative of u minus u times the derivative of v all over v squared. So given that u is equal to 1, we have the derivative of y, y prime, is equal to v times 0 minus 1 times v prime on v squared. And that simplifies to negative v prime on v squared. Again, the condition here is that v is not allowed to equal 0 and v must be differentiable at x. But however, the most robust proof is through the definition of the derivative. So we are going to be using the reciprocal rule in some future videos, so stay tuned for those. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below this video. There are hundreds of tutorials on this channel to help you with your studies, so check out my playlists. For now, best of luck with your studies, and I'll see you in the next video.